reporting into a dynamic uh, recording supported by Tableau. I think he also will give some previews on what they plan for long. Leo is a long-time customer of Tableau. I think he works now in several companies with, with Tableau already. I think he is always driving the joy and drives it further. And he will give you some insights on how they changed the world in Tableau. In Zalando with Tableau. Leo? Here we go. Thank you, Lars. Is it working? Yeah, good. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Leo, and I'm with Zalando for over a year. I brought a picture of me shaved, so you will recognize me next week because summer is coming, and it's time to shave, I think. Uh, I'm working as part of the marketing app team, and my position is basically the communication between the BI raw data to our channel managers and to create this synchronization between what the channel managers need to do and what the BI supply them. It starts with waking up one morning, it was Monday morning, so horrible morning, and waking, and waking up and discovering that we are not relevant anymore for our customers. Basically, our stakeholders saying that whatever we're doing for them is not good enough. We discovered that we're supplying them a weekly report while they're using a daily one. And we understood that something has to change. And this is basically our path. This is how we went. And we created this change to make sure that we actually supply what we need to our customers. When we prepared the data, as I said, we used to do it only once a week. It was a very heavy file. It was an Excel file. It was a very old file, actually, that we used to have since 2015. It wasn't updated. It wasn't changed, because every change of this file caused a crash. I believe that everybody knows it. And then we decided that it's time for us to start thinking, OK, what are the pain points of what our stakeholders don't like about us? What do we need to change to make it actually working? And we started to research. And we discovered that we actually, in our reporting, we're supplying 25 KPIs. Now, we met with a brilliant researcher from the University of Bologna who found out that the optimal number for a channel manager to have is 10 KPIs, no more than that. When you're supplying more than 10 KPIs, he cannot focus, actually, on the data. He doesn't understand what's going on there. He doesn't know how to work with the data. And then he's getting lost. And this is the biggest pinpoint that we found out when we started researching it. We tried to figure out, OK, so we have 25 KPIs. How many of them are actually relevant? What do we need to do? And then we started to go over our processes. OK, why are we so slow? Why do we supply the data only once a week? Why don't we supply it every day? Why is the blocker from us? Why our channel managers on a daily basis actually had their data aggregated and supplied to them by their own means? They done manual process for every single thing. They went to the dashboards of Facebook, they went to the dashboards of Google, they went to the dashboards of Twitter even, download the data, put it in an Excel sheet, started to aggregate it, started to work with it. And it's made no sense that we're doing a double job because for us it was also the same. Now, not only that, for us to actually supply the data to our customers at the end, because the stakeholders were so many of them, we needed to aggregate the data with R, which arrived to huge files of sometimes 1.5 gigabytes. I believe that nobody can actually open it with Excel. And this is where we realized that, again, we need to create a change, which brought us basically to start thinking, how do we take this Excel file and we actually transfer them into the times of today that you need to consume data in the best way. And as you can see, it's the amazing report. It's one of them. I'm sorry I cannot share numbers, uh, but you can see that basically we had uh, only level of the country and the OS. And that's it. That was the only dimensions they could use. Not only that, as you can see, we started from installs and install counting and then cost and CPI and CPU and so on and so on, which didn't make sense. It was too much for them to process, and it was even for us too much to process. And we realized that we need to change it. You can see here this amazing graph of mouse that we used to present to them. I believe that everybody can understand exactly what they need to do tomorrow, right? <laughs> this was the problem for us as well, because we gave data that actually wasn't usable for anyone. And this is where we decided that it's the time to start to adapt Tableau and bring it into the company and try to see how we're doing it. And then we met an amazing book by Peter Drucker that says the easiest thing, when you want to start something new, you need to start 
to, you need to stop something old. And this is what exactly we've done. We stopped reporting. We stopped giving Excel sheet for, I think it was almost a month, that nobody received any report from us. And everybody was asking, what are they doing, these guys that are sitting with the BI guys, with the developers, everybody coming around asking us questions about how are we processing the data because they're supposed to know what they're doing. But the truth was that we didn't. We didn't know what we're doing and we needed to go and learn it. And we sit together with our channel managers and we started to understand, okay, what does this data actually mean? What are you using it for? What is this KPI that you're using? Why do you actually check ROI? And yes, we are an e-commerce company. We're supposed to know what ROI means. But apparently our ROI wasn't their ROI. The way that they calculated the return of investment wasn't the same. And we needed to understand why it's not like that. And we needed not, on that, not only that, we needed only also to understand, okay, so when you're saying an ROI, what do you mean? And can it mean the same for the Facebook channel and for the Google channel? Do they all receive the same understanding of how we're using the data? And then we decided to come with this great idea. No more Excel. Indeed, it sounds like a story from a fairy tale. How can you stop giving Excel to people? Or how can you stop people using Excel? But actually what we've done during these weeks was to learn how they're using the data, what they're aggregating, what they're using it for, and actually they create the same structure of their thinking pattern in the database. So the database knew exactly what it needs to do. We knew how to give them recommendations based on what they're doing and to supply them the best information when they needed it. When you think about it, and channel manager, when he arrived in the morning and I saw that there are a lot of marketing uh, guys here, the first thing he's doing is opening his dashboard on Facebook, on Google. And he's starting to look, okay, what I done yesterday, how much did I spend, what is the return on investment, what's going on, how many users, how many installs, it's a lot of numbers that they're using. But actually, at the end, you can do it in one number. You can, pre you can forecast your ROI, you can create, you can aggregate this data together, and this is exactly what we've done. We set it with them, and we took what is important for you. What are the numbers that you need to use? What are the numbers that actually make sense to optimize based on? And then we aligned everybody. We took the entire app team, I remember it was a couple of channel managers sitting there. They all used to do a manual process and suddenly I would tell them, what it does, you don't need to do it anymore because we're going to do it for you. Everybody thought that it's a joke. And then we pulled out our weapon, which was the blow. And we tried to actually explain to them how they can use three or four KPIs and then the right hierarchy with the right dimension. And not only that, instead of giving them a dimensions of a country in the West, we gave them the dimensions of the creative. They could go to the level of the creative and actually know what does it mean to have the data. And then started our path. Our path started actually only with a Tableau desktop and Tableau reader. We didn't have a server. We didn't think back point that we have a server because we weren't sure how it's going to go, how people will take it. And I think that this is something that's relevant to everybody who's starting today with Tableau. Because you don't show how the path is going to go and then you're trying to work around it and see how you can fix it. And this is exactly what we've done. We started with a Tableau desktop. We aggregated the data on a daily basis every morning. We used to come there before our channel managers to make sure that they have the data at 9 a.m. already. And we took this data afterwards and saved it on a G drive. Very simple. We put a lot of files, but then we discovered one issue that we had there. People didn't actually download the latest file. And they used to come to us and tell us, guys, but why my numbers are wrong now? And then you go with them over the process and like, okay, show me what file you are using. And you find out that, okay, they're using a very old file. It's from last week. How can I use these KPIs if it was from last week? And I agree with you, you're completely right. And then we started to understand that we actually would need to do the Tableau server and start moving towards there. And this is actually what we're doing on these days. We're starting to adapt the Tableau server. We rolled it out today to the app team, and they started to use it as a tool that actually gave them the data on a live version, and then we don't have these issues. That's one of the key learnings that we had. We also learned that we're separating our systems to two different types. We have the Hive, Hadoop, basically, and Spark that we are using to process the data. We have a lot of data that we're receiving. We're receiving data from Adjust, from Facebook, from uh, Xengage that we're using. We're using a lot of partners. And all these partners sending us a lot of information. We moved all the APIs to sit under the BI. 
and the BI processing the information for us every morning, and they finishing by 6 a.m. every morning the aggregation, then they start in correction of the data, because not everything is correct. Sometimes you're using the wrong creative name, and you need to correct it. And this is what they're doing. And then at the final stage, they're actually aggregating the data so we can actually use the data at 8 a.m. already prepared and ready for our channel managers. Then when we're finishing the aggregation on the Hive and Spark, we're moving it, the operation, the entire operation into the XSO. And this is the biggest issue for us at the moment because not everybody knows how to write an SQL. And this is where the Tableau coming in again. And actually it was the big saver for us. We actually understood how to start using the data in the right way once we move it to XSO as an aggregated table. People can actually start using it from XSO directly to the, to the, to the Tableau server, and from the Tableau server they just start using it. It's really simple, it's really easy, and we're making sure that actually from now, our uh, managing board actually also using it. And not only that, they receiving a fresh look dashboard every week from us, which looks very good this time, and it's contained only 15 KPIs and not 25. Uh, we didn't reduce it until to 10 yet, but very soon we're going to arrive to it. We reduce it to 15 KPIs when understanding that we can actually reduce the amount of KPIs that we supply. We try to think in the shoes of our channel managers. That's, that's the land of motor. Think in your shoes of your customer. And this is actually what we've done. And we started to give them 15 KPIs and very soon we're going to reduce it. We're going to bring it as low as we can because we think that at the end, as a channel manager, you don't have time. You just don't. And then we went to our channel managers with this beautiful thing. It's a, a paper that we prepared. Uh, by the way, this is my writing and I'm not allowed to write anymore in any meetings in the company, I must say. <laughs> Nobody likes it. But what we're basically doing is we sitting down together with our channel managers and we're trying to understand, okay, do you think that this, this dashboard with what you have here will be enough for you, will be sufficient? And then we, before we even starting the process to sit on the Tableau desktop and start to develop the report, we're actually giving them a final version of how it's going to look like. Without numbers, without much information, we're trying to give it as simple as we can. This is how it's going to look like and this is the final version. In the company today, we have, I think, in our office only, on the, this area that we're sitting, three whiteboards. These three whiteboards become our best friends. There is no more presentation at Zalando and up for our team. The only thing that we're using is either the Tableau to present numbers or the whiteboards. If you need to present something, you're using the whiteboard. You're not allowed to make any presentation anymore. And we actually try to do the same method when we come into our channel managers to paint it with them together on a whiteboard and then transfer it to a paper that we can actually move it to the developers of the dashboards and build it. This is, for example, our CRM dashboard. We finished it with them two months ago and this is what they received. And they wanted a very special part of it. You cannot read it, I'm sorry. <laughs> It's basically asking to have a URL action, meaning that every time that they have a creative, they will click on it and they will go to directly to the campaign and be able to optimize it. And we need to work on it. And this is something that was very possible in a very easy way with Tableau. And this is basically how we see in the future. Our channel managers won't need to live outside of the Tableau. They will have everything in this closed environment, this, uh, this holistic dashboard. De dashboard but basically, we'll have the numbers on top, they will click it, it will be interactive, it will move to a website, they will be able to optimize their campaigns, and they basically will be able afterwards to make action. And action, I think it's a key component that what we're doing today. We're having key action for each team. We have for them what is the main key that they're going to optimize based on their creative. And this was one of the another learning that we had, that we need to agree on one KPI that will be relevant for this team to actually optimize. Then we took another step and we said, okay, what happens if tomorrow Rubin, our founder, will come to the office and want to see what's going on with the performance team? And we found a very easy way to do it. We constructed our dashboard in hierarchy. So there is an hierarchy that starts in from the top. He can see what the paid, non-paid and organic done yesterday. He can see afterwards, okay, from the paid, which channels drove the most activity, which channels actually improved. And we try to keep it in all of our reporting that we're creating now to make these dashboards relevant to every part of the company. Every function can actually open it and can find something they can relate to. And I think that this is something that 
it's another learning from this Monday morning with this cat that woke up and wasn't so happy about it. This was us and we are much more happier now. Actually, this is us. We're sitting today with a remote and basically we have a very, very easy control over our dashboards. We know exactly what's KPI going under. We know how to fix it. We're actually understanding much better today our data than what we understood it before. And this is our vision, to sit there in this huge panel room with a remote on the sofa and just push it when it's not working. And this is the only option to do it today with basically using a system that can go and directly push the data from the, from the database into the reporting. So we don't need to really work on this stuff. We actually can focus on making sure that the data arrives correctly. We can actually work on better attribution models. We can forecast much better. And I think that this is something that allows us to clean the way that we work today. And as the future, what we're going to do? We're going to have a dashboard of three KPIs only at the end, which will be what did you do yesterday in matter of session, what is the ROI you drove, and what is our recommendation to you. Why the recommendation? What is the idea of this recommendation for us? At the end, what we want to do is to replace the analysis part of the channel manager. And this is what we put ourselves as a vision. We don't want them to download data anymore to Excel. We want them actually to arrive in the morning and actually focus on what is really important for them. And it's to optimize their campaign. They need to actually understand what they're doing there. And then, in case they need to beat the business cases, we're going to have Tableau Server, so they will be able to really easily drag stuff and build their own reporting. They're not going to need us. They will be more self-serve. But we're still going to government the data that they receive. We will make sure that the KPIs they're using are our KPIs. So when we're arriving tomorrow to the managing board meeting, most likely we're going to report on the same number. When we're saying that Facebook created 50,000 sessions, we all going to have one number that is 50,000 sessions, and not 55 or 56 or 150, which once happened to us. At the end, I will finish it with saying that our life are too short. We have eight hours a day at work. Make it as simple as you can, and this is what we learned from all this process. We can make things much more easier for us and for our clients, and we can actually create a change and an impact inside the company. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, next on stage.